Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to manage multimedia in Power Apps. And by multimedia, I'm referencing things such as images and videos and audios. How do I go ahead and upload them? How do I go ahead and move them to apps? How do I go ahead and delete the ones that I don't want? And finally, how do I go ahead and download it? Because imagine that situation where you've lost your multimedia and all it is is in the app. But how do I go get it? Because it's not as easy as a right click and download. So I'll share that little tidbit with you all as well. So stick around, this will be fun. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now here I am in my Power As Canvas apps and here I am in this screen one. But if you look at the left side in the navigation, over here you will see media. And as I click on media, here is the multimedia option that I talk about. Now before we go jump into it, I wanna kind of pay a little bit of attention on what this is all about. And the best way to learn that is on the bottom, you have something called learn more. So when I click on the learn more, it actually opens up a Microsoft documentation and it gives you a little bit more inf information about this. But the key thing that we are gonna focus on today is basically the multimedia that is uploaded manually into Power Apps Canvas app. And that's this section over here, is the uh, images, audio, video, using the media plane. And so here's basically it. You can go ahead and do the uploads, you can go ahead and you know drag and drop, and I'll, I'll show you all of that. But there's key things over here that I wanna talk about is some of the limitations. So as you can see, some of the known limitations is first of all, all these media file types. These are the ones that are supported. But the two other key things is that these sizes, like the total size of the media files uploaded into an app cannot exceed 200 megs. And we'll prove that within a second. And then the maximum size of an, in, of an individual media file cannot exceed more than 200, I mean, 64 megs. What that means is that whatever that one file you're uploading, whether it be a video, audio, or an image, it cannot be larger than 64 meg. And then the overall number of files that you in, upload cannot you know, sum up to 200, can't go over 250 megs. 250 megs is the max, max per app over there. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind, all right? Well, now let's just jump into Power Apps and let's start playing around with it. So I'm gonna now come over here and I'm gonna click on Upload. When I click on Upload, I'll go to my place where I have my multimedia and let's first start by images. So in the images, I've got a few images over here. And as you can see, I've got even an SVG file. It's very similar to a PNG. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll select one of them and I'll come over here. And that is how you can go and see that it, moment I do it, something happened. You now see an images folder kind of, I mean, images section that showed up, showed up over there. This wasn't there before. All we had was an empty spot. In fact, I'll show it to you. I'll go and delete it. And as you can see, it disappears. When I come back to upload, I'll go and pick on that SVG file again. And now you will have that images. So it kind of starts creating a category because at the end of the day, there are three categories and I'll show you what those are. But as I go up now to upload, I'll go ahead and grab a few more. In fact, I can go ahead and just select all of them by holding the shift button down and I click on open. And here you go. It goes ahead and uploads all of them. Now, depending on how much is the file size and your internet speed at that time, the upload can go work over there. But the key thing I want you to mention over here is that all of these categories fell under images, including the GIF. Even the GIF files will go ahead and f fall under the images category. Something important to you know, kind of keep in mind. But I've gone ahead and actually gotten four different file types over here. I went and got the SVG, um, JPEG, or sorry, the JPG, PNG, and the GIF, and they all show up over here, right? But the neat thing from here onwards is how do I go ahead and drop the files over here? And I'll show you that in a minute. So let's go and get the other ones as well. Okay, I'm gonna go and now click on upload. And when I go to the upload, I'll actually go one step back and I'll go ahead and drop my audio. And the moment I say, I'm gonna actually get both of them. I'll go and grab that, right? Cool, nice, when I grab both of them, same thing. They're uploading it, aha, but now I see an audio section as well. So let me go ahead and grab the upload and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a video file and I grab both of these video files of mine and I'll upload them over here and I bet you you've already guessed it now there is a fourth category which is the videos so and as you can see it's already coming up and it's it's um, loaded so if I just go ahead and collapse them all as you can see these are the three different sections of the multimedia or three different categories of multimedia it's how it is stored inside your power apps now keep in mind that this section over here only t is about the usually the images or the files or the audios that you're gonna be in, you know, use it in mostly in the design section of the app. This is not the scenario where you're going to go ahead and build an app, say, you know, and, and use the camera mod, um, 
control and take pictures and then upload. No, that's those are completely separate images. This is the images that you uploaded for the app itself and it's embedded inside the app and you're going to use that. All right. So now we've gone ahead and uploaded these apps. I want to show you some tricks on how you can actually use it. In the past, and I'm saying like long, 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 long time ago, you actually had to come to insert, you had to go to media, you had to click, you know, drop the media uh, control over here. And then on the top in the formula bar, you actually had to start typing in that image, that the name of the image that you uploaded. So in my case, I put in 2020 because I know it was a 2020. And when I see it, I will click on it. And that's how the image comes over here. This literally was something we had to do once upon a time in Power Apps, but not anymore. Now I can go ahead and literally hover over it drag it and it comes straight over here into Power Apps. But now I can go ahead and basically drag it, I can drop it, I can go ahead and you know do all of these things over here. Just keep in mind that if I were to go ahead and delete one of them, it doesn't automatically delete over here. So I'll show this example, right? This one is, um, uh, is a picture I have of my fin. Now if I come over here to fin, if I select, oh, by the way, did you notice that? Instead of even dragging and dropping it, if you just click on it, it will even go ahead and, and do that. It's a pretty neat trick, okay? Not just drag and drop, click on it, and it'll still work. So here's the images that I have, all right? I got you two images of Finn. Now if I come to actually the image that I uploaded, which says Finn enjoying the beach, I'll click on that um, ellipsis, and I'll go and click on delete. It will tell me that, hey, Finn is used two times. So it's actually keeping a track also of how many times these images are used over there, which is pretty sweet. But if I go and remove it, it doesn't remove these controls. You got to go ahead and actually select it and then delete that. So that's a very important thing that you need to be keep track of. The good thing is that it's telling you that, hey, before you delete it, it's already being used X number of times. But if you delete it, you still got to go ahead and delete those controls manually. So keep that in mind. So the same thing goes for videos as well. And if I click on the video, it'll go ahead and automatically add the video. And this is also so neat because it's got the control, it's got the image, and you know it goes ahead and already places it for that. Same thing for the audio. If I go and click on it, it's already gone ahead and put that over here. Place makes it really convenient. So a question that might come up to you is that Daniel, I know that you can only go ahead and put in, you know, no larger than 64 meg over here. What if I try? Will it still do it? Like, is this really something that's going to block me or is it just a warning? Well, let's try. So I'm going to come to upload now. And I actually, in my video section over here, I have a pretty large file. It's 406 megs. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to go up over here. And right over there, this is too large. It is larger than 64 meg. You cannot upload it. So to answer your question, it's like, no, you just simply cannot upload it. This is not a warning. This is like a rule that, hey, you simply cannot go more than 64 megs, all right? And then if you try to go ahead and go past 200, uh, 200 megs as well, it'll give you a similar warning that you've reached your limit. You cannot go past over there. It also affects your power apps performance, specifically when the app is loading. So keep that in the back of your mind. Also, if you're kind of paying attention on the bottom left, it is keeping track of how much data you already have. So it, it's doing a great job summing up the total size of all the media, multimedia data because it's, it's actually doing a sum away. So right now, as we stand, you've got 5.56 uh, 5 megs worth of data that's uploaded. So that kind of helps you to keep track of all of this. I'm really happy about this place over here. Okay, so we went and talked about uploading it, all right? So when I did the uploading, there was a couple of things you can do over there. This is a nice one that is called remove unused media. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's see it, right? I'm going to click on a, a, a remove unused media. And as you can see, it did delete a few of them, but it specifically kept those which you got already being used in Power Apps, the ones that actually dried, dropped and put in the canvases. This is really neat for you to kind of go ahead and empty some unused controls in your apps. Because if you notice before it was in the five meg range, now it's almost dropped down to half. This is helping in the overall performance of your app as well. You might have actually at one point planned to use some images, maybe they were high resolution images, and you've uploaded it, completely forgot about that. And then you're starting to kind of spend some time improving the performance of your app. Well, come and do that first. Literally go to your media section, go up to the ellipses and select this, remove unused media. And you might actually delete some and you could actually improve the performance of your app. So something to think about in that case over there as well. All right, so the final piece of this video is to go ahead and show you how I can download one of these images or these multimedias. And the scenario that I talked about is a legitimate one. Say you've gone ahead and replaced your laptop or whatever reasons, um, and you've lost those images. But hey, the image is still there in the app. Well, how do I go and get them? How do I go and get this multimedia? Because a couple of things I've tried. I've actually gone to the play and I've done right here in the image, right click, and I'll go ahead and say, oh, there's a save as option. 
When I go to the save as option, all I get are these ones. See, these are not video extensions. These are nothing to do with the app uh, uh, pictures or audio or video. No, this is purely HTML, which means it will just download the HTML version of it, not even the whole file content, just basically the you know HTML code over there. Same thing happens over here as well. Save as for the video, save as for the audio. It doesn't give you the actual content. So to do this, there is a tricky way and I'll show you how to do that. So first thing you got to do is you got to go ahead to your file and then you got to go ahead and do a save as. And when you do a save as, it's going to say, okay, I already saved it over there. No, I don't want to save it in the cloud. I'm going to click on this computer and on this computer, I'm going to click on download and then you find a good place for it to download. So in my case, it is downloading on my local machine in the download folder. So I'll come now straight back over here and it's in my downloads folder. And there you go. There is my MS app file. Here's the next thing you gotta do. You gotta right click on it and you gotta go and rename. And you're renaming specifically the file extension, the MSAPP. You select that and you replace it into ZIP for zip. And it'll ask you, they say, you're gonna go and rename it. Are you okay with it? I said, yes, I am going to go and make that change. And the moment you do that, it becomes your zipped file folder. And if you have got, I've got a third party tool on my machine, you may not have it, that's fine. Just, it'll show you as the zipped file. Now that's pretty interesting because right here you can unzip it. You, I'm gonna go ahead and unzip it or extract it. So I'm going to extract all my files over here. It'll go ahead and do that. And any second now I'll see the folder. When I click on the folder, I go to assets and I click on assets. Ah, you see it is actually showing me the same type of functionality I have over here. See that in my image, in my apps, I have images and I have videos and audio. That's what I'm seeing over here as well. Audio, video and images. But I want to look at the file names because that is something that does tend to change. So under images and under videos and under audio in power apps, I'm actually able to see these file names. However, if I were to go to audio, you see that audio name is called as B buzz. However, it goes in the, when you're downloading it, it goes ahead and changes it into a good type of a thing over there. But I do like specifically for audio. I like because it is able to go ahead and save the metadata. Metadata means it knew that at some point, specifically for our audio, this was a video that you had downloaded from the YouTube audio library. So it's recording that. It did record the original title. See the title? It recorded that. And then there is actually the, you know, the file over there, which is the MP3 file. It doesn't do the same thing for the other ones also. So like images. No, it's, it's good enough to tell me what the image type is with uh, the extension, whether it's a you know, SVG or a JPEG, it's keeping track of that, but it doesn't anywhere, doesn't tell me what the file name is. Cause I, these are the three files that I have. This one doesn't tell me that. So that's something you're gonna have to spend a little extra time going ahead and finding that. And honestly, the same thing happens for the videos as well. If I go to the video, it does go ahead and create this entire, um, you know, good type of file name. It doesn't recognize the original file name. As you can see, Power Automate Demo Video was the file name, not in this case. This also does a good job at least keeping some metadata, which means it's telling you what the file type is, what is the total size, the length of the video. That's pretty neat. But like we saw in the audio, it had, remember the original title, which was the B buzz. Video doesn't do that. It doesn't remember the original title. So in this case, you've actually got to go ahead and find out what the name, or you'll have to go and rename it, something that you will have to do extra. However, the good thing is, you can go ahead and export that MSAPP file, rename it to zip, unzip it, and you've got all your images over here. Wasn't that awesome? I just walked you through how to manage your multimedia. And if for whatever reason you lost those files, you can now retrieve them directly from your Power Apps. Also keep in mind to go and try that delete any unused files because that way you can improve the performance of your apps. So hopefully this was helpful. And as always, keep using Power Apps. Hey everyone. Hopefully you found this video useful and if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.